Hello and good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jan Gerlach. I am a lead public policy manager at the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the nonprofit that hosts Wikipedia. And we are an affiliated participant in the network of centers. The network of centers has um, built a tradition of meeting at the annual Internet Governance Forum. Unfortunately, this year we cannot be all in one place, so we're meeting our friends and allies remotely. And I'm today delighted to be joined here by Wolf Flo from the Inter International Center for, Sci for Ethics in Science and Humanities at the University of Tübingen. And Wolf will talk to me a little bit about uh, what he does at his center, where they are based, what upcoming projects they have, and how um, other centers in the network of centers can participate. Hello, Wolf. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, um, Jan. Um, I'm really happy to meet you. Thanks a lot for uh, uh, having me. Um, and thanks a lot that we can uh, be now part um, at the network. That's a very recent, as of last week, I think. Uh, Congratulations. Um, development. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, my name is Wolf Flo. I'm, I'm currently a postdoc at the um, uh, ITZDW, the International Center for Ethics in the Sciences and Humanities. Um, we generally, um, I myself, um, am mostly in uh, doing research in um, ethics regarding AI, regarding um, media, social media, um, democracy, public sphere, but also um, uh, social robotics, um, these kind of things. So philosophy of technology, ethics of technology in the broad sense. Um, that sounds like a lot, but um, maybe we can come to this, that there are a lot of uh, connections in these um, uh, things, not least of them privacy, which is one of my, my main focus. I'm trained in philosophy um, and uh, I've been working at the center for a little bit more than uh, two years now. Um, yeah, in the center, it's uh, it's an um, interdisciplinary research center at the University of Tübingen uh, in Germany. Very nice, small uh, student town, a little bit south of Stuttgart for the people that have some geography uh, uh, ideas. Um, and we are uh, generally interdisciplinary. We exist for now 25 years, I think. Uh, we started off uh, a lot with um, uh, biomedical ethics, um, genetic engineering, these kind of things in the 90s, um, but have evolved ever since. Um, we combine a lot of researchers from philosophy, social science, especially political science, environmental studies, uh, but also biology, uh, theology. So there's a, a we're, we're, we're a diverse bunch in this respect. Um, and the, the ECDV itself has about 60 uh, staff members right now. We do about 30 um, third party uh, funded projects right at the moment. Uh, so we're mainly third party funded, a lot of um, German Ministry of um, Education and Science uh, things, but also other ministries, EU, Horizon 2020, the whole uh, um, thing. Um, the research group that the working group that I am part of uh, that deals mainly with uh, media ethics and information technology, there we combine media ethics, media philosophy with philosophy of technology, technology ethics, and also uh, a lot of STS, um, science technology, technology studies. Um, and because we think that that um, uh, that ethical evaluation of technology or applied ethics always needs empirical research and always needs this uh, empirical side. And um, we do a lot of um, technology development uh, um, uh, evaluation where we are sort of like the ethical partners in some projects on uh, technology development um, projects. Um, so rather yeah, maybe, broad scope, yeah. very interesting. Um, yeah. And and 
can you just t tell me a little bit about um, how, how old is your group? Um, you mentioned that it sits in a, in a larger um, center that, that looks at, at all the ethical questions of technology as well uh, in a broader sense, also uh, bioethics you mentioned, I think, and medical ethics. How, how old is your group? Um, well, I mean, so um, that's also an uh, uh, evolving uh, thing, but we started off in the early 2000s, I would say 2004, 2005, and we um, did in, uh, that was way before my time. So, um, but uh, what we did in the beginning, a lot of uh, security ethics um, mm -hmm. and still are also, especially with uh, um, digitalization and uh, um, um, digital technology. Uh, we did a project on body scanners. Uh, we did a project on smart surveillance and security. Um, so these kind of uh, um, things we st we are still doing. We are working a lot with uh, German um, first responders, um, German Red Cross, but also uh, police. Um, um, and we're doing right now, we, we uh, are doing projects on fake news and these kind of things. So that's, that was maybe, I think the beginning, but then especially with um, the AI, yeah, one could probably say hype. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and then also the hype in, in robotics, especially uh, social robotics, um, we uh, naturally turned also to, to these kind of things. Um, and so, for example, just to give you an idea of what we, what the, are the kind of things that we're currently uh, uh, doing, we're um, in this, in this realm of social media, democracy, public sphere, we, for example, uh, are part of a project that's called WeNet, um, that's an EU um, Horizon 2020 project, where um, the idea is to develop an online platform that aims at uh, a diversity aware social media interaction. That means that other than uh, Facebook or um, uh, Twitter and, and, uh, and WhatsApp, you're not going into these filter bubbles, but breaking out of them. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like the main uh, idea behind this project. So this is one of those. Uh, we're doing a lot of pri uh, on privacy. We have uh, what is called uh, Forum Privatheit, Forum Privacy, with, since 2014, where we did uh, a lot of different um, takes on privacy in the digital age. Right now, we uh, last year we did something on privacy in children, um, and for the next um, um, for the next iteration of this uh, of this project, we're focusing on on privacy in the course of life. So, like from uh, young age to old age, especially the focus is on privacy in vulnerable groups. Uh, general mm -hmm. in this forum, that's something that we would be uh, also very interested to collaborate with uh, uh, other um, uh, centers in the network because we think that um, there are a lot of issues. And especially since right now, our focus is more like on Germany, there's also like, there's some uh, other partners involved that do like German legal privacy data protection uh, um, stuff. But we're very interested here to broaden this and, mm -hmm. and invite people that, uh, that are uh, um, interested in collaborating with us, for example, on these uh, um, aspects. Um, is, there I just, a, is there a yeah. pandemic a pandemic angle to, to this project, for instance? Um, when you talk about vulnerable groups, I think nowadays, whenever we talk about vulnerable groups or hear about this, in at, at least I when I hear about this, it somehow has shifted from how we talk mm -hmm. about this, right? This is a term that appears much more in, in I think, everyday life now and 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 often what what we mean is vulnerable groups who are vulnerable to COVID-19 right yeah so, yeah, so is yeah. there some, is there an angle to that as well well I mean so for the for the next iteration not in particular I mean so it's not um not focused on this um but of course um that's something that that um we also think about a lot and and have been involved in in um some um projects and and things for example we started a blog right in the beginning of the uh, COVID-19 that which is unfortunately in German so it's well oh, oh it isn't really um 
some of the some of the um, blog posts are in German, some of them are in English from people from the center, their own take on the COVID-19 crisis and uh, related aspects. Um, I think I had two posts in that, for example, one on um, on triage and, and um, racial discrimination. Um, but that's like, you know, um, for this for this privacy uh, for, for privacy focus, that's not a that's not really a focus for us mm -hmm. there right now. Um, yeah, for example, something else that you know, I can talk about because it's something that I've been involved or I am involved. Uh, um, I've been in a project where um, the idea was developed like uh, social companion robots for elderly. And I looked especially at the privacy aspects. And um, it's very interesting to see that a lot of uh, robotics still and, and robot ethics still is not about privacy, which I find um, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm always surprised because, um, I mean, so there is some talk about this, but the main focus of people that do research on privacy, especially in the philosophical, uh, um, in, in, in the philosophical sense is more on the internet um, mm -hmm. or on, on um, smartphones. And um, people that do robot ethics are typically not interested in privacy. And if you have like a robot in your house that, you know, has like six, seven sensors that are on 24 seven, um, that's a major privacy issue. Um, and we're trying to, to develop, I, I wrote a couple of uh, um, papers that um, hopefully will come out um, uh, anytime um, on how to, you know, um, design interaction with elderly people on how to, you know, make, give them the, even the possibility to have something like informed consent. Right. You're not even talking about people that are, that have, you know, some cognitive issues. We're talking about people that, that are not tech, technology savvy, that mm -hmm. maybe have a problem with hearing or speaking. Um, and, and you don't have to have like big, and then, you know, just like with Alexa, you turn it on and then everything goes on. And, you know, it, from then on, it'll, you know, uh, um, it'll talk, talk home to, whoever right. built built the thing right this this sounds very intriguing to me why do you think there is this lack of or like what do you identify as a lack of attention to privacy issues is it because robots sort of like the dark side of like them taking over is is more is more sort of attention like grabbing or or why is that i think there is um i mean that has been um a very um yeah, especially in philosophy um, and general uh, um, ethics of technology has been like a yeah, very intriguing subject or field of inquiry. Um, and it's interesting also, also the whole talk about, you know, uh, autonomous cars and I have been guilty of writing papers on autonomous cars. Um, but um, I think after a while, or at least that's for us, that's the, the interesting part is to see like how does, you know, the technology play out in practice right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, people are designing those things right now. Mm -hmm. um, there is a big, liter a big literature on, you know, um, um, anthropomorphizing and emotionalizing uh, social robots um, for the last, um, yeah, five to 10 years, I would say. Um, and I think that's a big issue still, um, but with, but the connection, and there's also almost always the connection made also to privacy, but nothing comes of it. That's, mm. that's what I, what I mean. So people say, okay, behind this seemingly seamless and smooth interaction and all these kind of things you can have, you can hide all these privacy issues and all these uh, datafication that you, that is going on. And in this sense, you have different kinds of dark patterns or uh, um, uh, then maybe in the internet, but you know, they, they work in the same or in a, in a very similar way. Uh, and people point to that, but then 
most people don't say so so how do you change that how can you make this better and um and that's maybe also something like it's a little bit the nitty gritty and then you need the designers um, and the engineers and you know and then in the end it's not fancy and mm -hmm. or not that fancy and then maybe people are not interested and i'm not saying there's that there isn't any uh any talk of this uh, i'm just surprised that how little still there is given the fact that you know i mean so the smartphone is probably uh, the device with the with the most sensors and and uh, data tracking so far but um you know look at some smart home applications or some social robots i mean so the typical robot has as i said six to seven sensors um that just in order for it to you know uh, orientate in within 3d and not bump into things have to be right. constantly recording basically mm -hmm. but as a as a result of that i imagine somebody out there has a pretty precise map of your apartment right um yeah as i have like a vacuum cleaner robot yes probably but yeah. a funny interesting thing there um when i bought it um not too long ago uh it was like a, it's a it's a it's a chinese model and it comes with a chinese app and the app is like you know like my android tells me uh so um the app wants access to your camera and your contacts and your i don't know all your memory cards and, and, mm -hmm. and all these things and i'm like you're a vacuum cleaner what do you need all these things and i'm like always deny 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 and of course the app works but you know still still you can you can try right it's just a very social vacuum cleaner yeah yeah it'll, so <laughs> it, it'll talk to all my friends yeah um, I think historically the network of centers has been pretty good at shining a light on issues that may have been sort of underappreciated or that need sort of more inquiry and and also um, sort of putting it in it's sort of like at center stage a little bit of of um, of research also collaborating um, on those things. Uh, do you think this is something where there's there's room for for the network of centers to maybe assist you, help you, or for you to to collaborate with others? Definitely, definitely. So I mean, um, that is something that I personally like to explore more and see more, especially also people from interdisciplinary research. Um, we have um, um, uh, traditionally a strong focus on on ethics and and social sciences um social implications of technology but the legal side we basically and a lot of the centers do have a strong legal uh mm -hmm. leaning which which would be a perfect um match because i think that is something that we are um basically missing we don't have any uh um legal experts in 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 our center but there are also like two things maybe that i could quickly mention before mm -hmm. the, the 20 minutes are uh, already over that we think uh that right now in the near future we we can uh we have a a high interest in collaborating and one one thing is um we are um for couple of years now, um, more and more into um, AI ethics, uh, moved into AI ethics. Um, we have close uh, connection and collaboration with the Tübingen uh, Excellence Cluster of Machine Learning. We have, uh, and we have this past uh, year um, in March, I think we um, came out with a sort of like a policy white paper that's called uh, with a group of um, researchers from all over Germany that's called from principles to practice. And um, where we thought about how to how to implement all these AI ethical principles. Mm -hmm. And they're like, so maybe you you know, the, the high level expert group and Floridi and these, you know, mm -hmm. big um, principles of transparency and explainability and w w whatever they are. And I think there are now over 200 papers or policy uh, uh, guidelines that mention one or some other of these principles. Um, 
and we took with some people that are experts in 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 uh, regulation and and standardization um and also some philosophers and uh, and computer science people and we try to figure out on a let's say middle level how to to implement those and then we we broke it down a little bit and from the values we came to criteria and some observables and indicators so what does actually have to happen in order for a system to be transparent and is there something that i can measure this with mm -hmm. um and so we realized that with every every operationalization sorry about that um Hard that work. comes <laughs> come um should have chosen a different one um there come come certain dangers of course because you're you're missing out on 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 um on context but i think in order to you know maybe get everybody on the same page on what are we actually talking about when we're talking about transparency or mm -hmm. non-discrimination um and also to give regulators but also uh, uh the public something that they can you know say okay but you didn't do this and mm -hmm. you know this is something that you should be doing mm -hmm. um yeah and we would be interested we know of in germany of two or three other um projects that work in this kind of direction but we would be very interested to to exchange ideas and collaborate um and see how there's there's tons of open questions we're right now working with some uh, ministries and trying to uh, german federal ministries and trying to continue to work so that the, this first policy paper is only basically a proof of concept um, mm -hmm. and um, yeah we'd be very happy to to collaborate on on these kind of things putting a pin in there for other centers at yeah very, i mean at the very so end of the video be here, something like, yes that would be something there's also another thing i don't know if we still have time of course of course um um so we um we very recently started reaching out to some people at the university of sao paulo um and we're trying to figure out how to because we have some we had some projects in the past on digitalization in the global south um and how that affects for example we had a, a project uh, on the ethical implications of it export to sub-saharan african countries um but we think it's uh, from our perspective it's very hard to get funding for these kind of things in germany um and so by chance, we we uh, we made a connection with the University of Sao Paulo, and we're thinking about uh, a project. This is very in very early stages. Um, um, thinking about a project um, on the digitalization of education in the global south. So for example, one question could be how can guidelines and regulation efforts um, um, affect uh, the global south beyond the EU or something wherever mm -hmm. the, those regulations are uh, originate basically and how can we translate them is there a way to measure this um, um, does that even make sense is this not just a you know new colonialization uh, kind of thing do they need their own regulations or so so thinking about how how regulations in the EU or in the US would affect education in mm -hmm. in the south no, would would affect digitalization um, mm -hmm. and and um, um, privacy rights and all these kind of things in the uh, uh, in the global south, mm -hmm. and we think that education could be like a good first idea to to start with to look at. Mm -hmm. um, that's not that's not you know. Um, that's not a given, but we think this might be something uh, um, that is interesting um, to look at and to see. Um, and we'd be, especially since the center is uh, is um, so uh, is so global, we'd be we'd be more than happy to to see what people come up with and collaborate um, because this is you know something that's always 
in the back of our minds and every once in a while that kind of, there's a there's a project but you know we we're actually very interested in in um building up this um uh, building up this connection and and um, and make some uh, um, make some collaborations work in this field. Sounds like you've come to the right place. Uh, Network <laughs> Center is definitely the right place to to find collaborators are all around the world, um, and it has grown a lot in recent years, especially um, in in places outside uh, the US and the EU. Um, so lots of opportunities there. Well, um, Wolf, thank you so much for uh, chatting with me today. It was a pleasure meeting you and hearing about your center. And um, I'm excited to see uh, what's going to come from this as well. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time. And um, yeah, uh, we'll, we're, we're happy to be on board and see, see where that takes us. Welcome again. <laughs>